Welcome back to another edition of SHS Today. Up first, we have Sarah Burgess presenting another edition of Coffee Time. After that, we have Alex Kotowski taking us behind the scenes of the live video crew. And finally, we have Dawson Higgins showing us an artist and her artwork here at Celine. All of this and more on this edition of SHS Today. Hello and welcome to another fantastic episode of SHS Today. I'm Sarah Burgess. And I'm Dawson Higgins. Let's get right into this week's show. The Saline Area Schools Board of Education continues to move forward with the superintendent selection process. On April 26th, 28th, and 29th, interviews will be held with the five candidates. We wish them well. If you aren't a morning person, you probably rely on coffee to keep you going throughout the day. I know I do. Last time, Sarah here took a look at the French press coffee, and today she brings you insight into the pour over method in her segment, Coffee Time. Coffee is the third most drank beverage in the world. If coffee is such a common drink, you'd expect the basics to be simple. Well, I hate to break it to you, but you'd be wrong. Let's break that down. Now, if you saw my first installment, you already know that the most important part of your coffee is the method that you use to make it. Last time, we took a look at the French press, but today, the pour-over is taking the spotlight. Being the method that gives you the most control, the pour-over is the preferred brew among many coffee fanatics, like our coffee expert, Sean. I prefer a really nice pour over. It's really nice to just slow down in the morning and like that moment is just for you. If you've had coffee before, it's most likely that you've had the easier version of the pour over. A pour over essentially is just like the manual version of what everyone's automatic drip maker does. You're just in control of the water flow, the temperature, and um, how you grind your coffee. If you're one to experiment, all of these variables make it perfect for you to try everything, one cup at a time. One really huge benefit to pour over is that um, since you don't have to brew a whole pot, you can brew one cup at a time. So it, it allows you for more coffee choice and you can experiment a lot more easily. With the pour over, the one controlling the coffee is you. Tune in soon if you want to see an automated coffee, the espresso. Reporting for SHS Today, I'm Sarah Burgess. I'll see you in the studio. I couldn't expresso my love for coffee anymore. Not this again. Oh, come on. Don't tell me this isn't your cup of coffee. Really? All right, all right. I admit that wasn't the greatest pun. We should probably move on to some more pressing matters. If you are a senior graduating this year, don't forget these upcoming dates. On May 14th, there will be cap and gown pickup, and on June 6th, graduation ceremony will occur. And congrat congratulations for almost making it through high school. Have you wondered how to watch Celine Sports online? The school's band and orchestra performances? Well, thanks to Celine's live video crew, it's all possible. We go to Alex Gutowski to tell us more. Some form of a video crew has existed for 15 years. However, four years ago, the Celine Live Video Crew was turned into a paid job. Uh, the Live Video Crew is basically just uh, a crew of people who uh, set up equipment to live stream several sports events uh, around the building. We do sports, theater events, um, and really anything else that comes on school property that they might deem perfect for uh, to stream live or to go on the school's YouTube channel uh, to kind of show what students are doing at Sling High School. This program is primarily run by students, only having adults to supervise. It's nice to like learn how to learn how to shoot things, learn how to set up, tear down a camera, like all all that technology stuff that some people don't know about. I get to know. But the advantages of the live crew are not only technical. It also gives extended relatives and loved ones, friends and family that are in other states an opportunity to watch relatives play, uh, sing, act, uh, when they can't be here. 
These events are broadcasted live on selenelive.com and uploaded to youtube.com slash selenevideo after the events are over. If you want to learn more about the video crew, email Ben Goodman at the email address shown on your screen. Reporting for SHS Today, I'm Alex Skatowski. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Alex. I'll be really excited to see what SHS does next on the Celine Video Channel. AP exams are finally coming up, Celine. Tests are scheduled to begin on May 3rd and continue for the next three weeks. Make sure you know what dates, times, and locations you will be taking your exam if you have signed up to participate. As you may well know, Celine High School has many art programs for students here. Students who want to pursue art in their future can take a multitude of these classes. That's right. Stu these, those students have great things to share about their art, so I decided to highlight them in this new segment, Celine Artist Spotlight. There are a ton of fantastic art programs here at Celine, from working with clay and pottery to focusing on the creation of 2D art. In these classes, there are a slew of passionate artists dedicated to improving their craft, each with their own unique view, process, and creative vision. In this segment, I'm going to take you through some of these artists and have them describe their works, the thought process behind them, and what meaning it could hold to them. Welcome to the first episode of Celine Artist Spotlight. I'm Caroline Adams. I have taken Intro to Art, Pottery 1, Pottery 2, Pottery 3, um, Art and Design, and Jewelry 1 and Jewelry 2. And now I'm in AP Art and Design. Caroline primarily does clay pottery as of now, so I decided to ask her if there was a specific piece she was maybe proud of and if there was any inspiration behind it. I'm proud of what I'm calling my donut teapot. I have traveled a lot. I've been very lucky to be able to travel a lot and I went to Russia when I was 12 and that experience has just impacted me a lot and I wanted to have that influence show itself in my work. This particular donut shape is uh, derived from a kvass pitcher and I wanted to kind of like turn that idea on its head because it's already a funky kind of weird shape the way it was made. So I put it horizontal as opposed to standing vertical, and it just, I don't know, it just is so weird and I just love it. Caroline doesn't make her art so easily this year because she's on the online only schedule. This means she also has to deal with the drawbacks of pursuing pottery at home. We heaved a, a potter's wheel all the way downstairs from the school. I have probably five, eight pounds of clay in my basement at the moment that is all workable. That's about all we had for this edition of Swilling Art Spotlight. I hope you learned how the influence for pieces can come from interesting places and about the process of which creating a piece is done. I'll see you back at the studio. It's interesting to see what one of the many talented artists here at Celine has to share, and I can't wait to see more artist spotlights in the future. Well, that's all the time we have this week. I hope you enjoyed the show. I'm Dawson Higgins. And I'm Sarah Burgess. Tune in next week for a fun look back at a middle school favorite, Geek Weekly a story about a local organization doing big things, and another edition of Quote of the Week. Have, Have a, a great, great week, Hornets! Hornets.